Hi everyone, it's Henry here and joining me for this video is our Commissions Chief, Ben. And the reason for that is because we're going to talk a little bit about the Slaves to Darkness project that we started at the back end of last year. Um, just to introduce to Ben really quickly, um, I'm not going to let him do it because we've had some audio issues and I don't want us to be talking over each other too much. But essentially, if you ever get in touch with the studio for commissions, it's going to be Ben that you're going to be getting in touch with. Um, he's the lead. He works the rest of the team work under him. So with that in mind, you really ought to say hello, Ben. Otherwise, it's really rude. How are you, mate? And what have you got in the studio at the minute? Evening all, I'm doing fine, thank you. It's a busy one in the studio at the moment. We've got a lot of Lumineth on the table. We're doing an army commission for someone. We've got some First and Second World War biplanes. We're doing a bit of a memorial display, which is a really nice change of pace. And we've also got quite a lot of commercial work on at the moment. I can't really talk about that one yet, but when we do get some updates, uh, we'll let you know. And there's plenty more coming in. Yeah, and it's the commercial work that has partly put a spanner in the works as it so often does with deadlines changing and, and things like that um but let's do a little bit of background then on the project so if you've been watching the channel for a little while you kn you'll know that uh, around novemberish last year uh, games workshop released the new slave startless uh, sort of army launch box which had a demon prince in some ogroids in and some chosen in um and we sort of saw this we got very very excited myself and ben have been huge fans of warriors of chaos slaves to darkness hordes of chaos you know all the different iterations and names it's been since the first edition of, of 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 warhammer and we've had several armies you know right right the way through those editions so we love this stuff um and when it came out we sort of had this inkling that there might be a bit of a civil war brewing between bellacor and archaeon uh, their followers and we thought what a, a wonderful natural way for us to do a little project where i'll do one lot then can do the other lot we'll fight them take some photos be a giggle um, and we also wanted to invite people on the discord to join us so we started a, a channel over on our discord path to glory um, where anyone who just wanted to join in paint some chaos for a few months um, and see what we had at the end of it um, so you know lots of passion lots of desire to do the project people in the discord were, were, were jumping all over it it was going great guns um, and then we started to hit a few little roadblocks um, Chief amongst them really was personal and professional lives um, getting in the way as they do with, with so many people, right? Um, you know, our situations have changed and I was like, oh, two months to get an army done? Easy peasy. Like I've, I've done that in two, three weeks previously, no problem. Well, that was old Henry. New Henry does not have the wherewithal to do an army in three weeks. Um, and as we just mentioned, Ben with the commercial work, particularly, you know, growing the studio at the minute in that direction, um, yeah people are paying for things they, they've got to get them right um so that sort of put a little bit of a, a, a the brakes on to a degree um but i think the other really large stumbling factor that we came up against was that although we had the army launch box in november or whatever it was the rest of the range and the range got quite a big update of miniatures wasn't going to be coming out until well we didn't know when a few months we weren't really sure what was happening so myself and ben both traditionally have tended to paint an army in a big lump you know and then get it out of the way and do it but the reason i wanted to ask ben on here is he has painted more models than anybody i know he has painted more armies than anybody i know and it's through chatting to him over the last few months that he's helped me figure out how to get this project back on track how to get this project finished and i'm hoping in this video he's going to drop a few little tips and tricks that might help you out um, with what you've been doing um, basically he knows a lot listen to him don't listen to me. Um, that's fair, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's safe to say, you know, I'm not going to blow my drone trumpet too much, but I have painted one or two armies and come across a lot of problems along the way. So I've, I've worked out a few little bits that, that kind of help you through if the motivation's starting to drop. Yeah, I, I, that's that's a nicer way of, nicer way of putting it. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, first we'll talk about... Um, as I say, the, the motivation for this project, the desire to do this Slaves to Darkness project was was never a barrier. I think sometimes you can get caught up in the new shinies, you know, maybe your friends are, are interested in doing a project or Gaze Workshop are running their campaigns and, and you think, oh my goodness, I want to buy all of this and do all of this. And quite often that, that momentum goes very quickly, partly because the new shiny thing usually comes out. Um, or, you know, you, you rely on other people and, and, and the projects fade out. Um, 
that wasn't going to be a problem for us in the sense of, as I said, we both, you know, cut us and we'll bleed Adrian Smith artwork pretty much. Um, you know, when we talk on tea breaks, it's very often about chaos stuff and and, and the old world and, and whammer fantasy and, and things like that. So, yeah, that was never going to be the issue. The issue was going to be figuring out how to make sure that this project got done from a, a professional point of view, uh, a standards point of view. If we said we're going to do something, we want to do it. We want to achieve that. Um, and I think particularly when you are a, a visible or a vocal person in the community, as we are with a with a YouTube channel and this, if you say you're going to do something, you need to do it, right? You know, I, I there's nothing worse than hearing people moaning about not completing things, right? It's, yeah. it's, okay, you get enough of that from your friends or yourself, right? You don't, you don't need that from the... From, from your from your hobby content so i think so um i'm going to talk really briefly about what i've done to tweak mine and to get mine back on track uh, and then i'm going to let ben take the floor really to to, to to fill you in a lot more with with what he's been doing but we've just got a few images we've been cycling through while i've been chatting now just showing off some of the stuff that's in the discord um i haven't put people's names on there because it's obviously it's not their social media accounts it's just their their discord stuff so if you do want to go and check them out there's some there's some awesome ones on there. There really, really are. And that's, again, been, been very, very inspiring to want us to, to, to keep going. Um, so changes for me. Um, okay, if you've watched the video, previous videos, you'll see I did a few test schemes. Um, but the, the biggest change for me was rather than just changing a couple of paints and a couple of techniques, I decided to try and change my mindset um, around the project um, yes I was doing this for work but it was something I, I really enjoyed doing but something Ben sort of instilled in me is this idea that you know you probably have a finite amount of projects in you um, so I've decided to approach this as if it's going to be the last Warriors of Chaos Army I ever do um, so I need to pick all the miniatures that I absolutely love because I'm not going to get a second chance to do it and all of a sudden that click it just meant that every moment I was spending on this project, I was enjoying. So rather than getting down about not being able to do things, even that snatched five minutes to work on this cloak became really cool because it was it became a little bit more significant, a little bit more important. Um, I also cheated a little bit and just decided to do a way easier armor scheme um, and, and basically pinch what Ben was going to do. Um, but Bell, of course, a lot of silver anyway. Um, so here you can see a little whip of mine. The majority of mine are in this sort of state, so I still need to do things like weapons and individual details. Um, but I've painted a lot of silver armies, iron warriors, grey knights, things like that. And for me, metallic schemes are a, a just absolute top tier for for time, effort versus results. I think, yeah. Um, it's what it allows me to do is get that looking really nice really quick and then i can spend what little time i do have on the details and the stuff that makes them interesting um my force is all warriors whether it's warriors chosen knights champions whatever they're all big armored things um so that's my dog just having a scratch after after dinner sorry if i might pick that up um so you know things like the lizard cloaks and, and stuff like that they, that's the individual details you've got on them um but the majority of the models are you know the same same leather recipe same armor recipe same cloak recipe get it done um and that's helped really helped me i say it's that mindset change rather than necessarily the technique change itself um and again that only came from talking to friends talking to ben about it and and, and again just sort of exposing yourself to different ideas um and not beating yourself up about why a project isn't working you know, it's not always simple, right? It's good to talk, you know, and talk things through. And maybe someone else's perspective is what you need to get yourself back on track with it. So that's how mine improved. Um, we're going to be seeing the results of this in a month or so, which is very exciting. Um, but Ben, floor's yours. What did you do? What's your army all about? What have you changed? Where are you at with it? Go. Cool. Well, so... As you've said, you know, rightly so, I am an old school Warriors of Chaos, Hordes of Chaos, Slaves to Darkness fan. I've always enjoyed it, always loved it. It's fantastic. It's it's just ticks all the boxes for me. So as you say, motivation, inspiration, that was not in short supply. And I think what hindered me initially was, as you say, the releases being a little bit staggered, but also that I approached this exactly how I would approach every other army in that I was like, I'm going to build it all, I'm going to undercoat it all, then I'm going to airbrush it all. And you're sitting there looking at 
what was ostensibly at least 2,000 points worth of miniatures. And it's daunting, you know, even for someone like myself who does paint all day, every day and has done for years, it's it's still quite a daunting task. So whilst I'm sort of there almost slogging away, almost punishing myself for, for, for having this vast collection of miniatures in front of me, I was losing sight of what inspired me. So to, to take a step back from that, I decided that it actually be better to focus on this unit by unit. And I broke my army down into little chunks. I was originally going to do four 500 point chunks, but actually a little thousand points is a great size. I got to include all of the miniatures that I wanted to from the range. And it, it sort of gave me a, an interesting variety to work through. Um, so what, what is that we, we should say we sort of chose with these, these new miniatures to basically between the two armies, try to show off all the kits or as many of the kits as possible. Um, so whilst I went the warriors route, then you sort of chose this idea of, you know, empty the eight points. It was a, a true old yeah. school horde of chaos, um, like group of miniatures. Right. Um, so uh, this is something you've said to me, but I, w- I want you to, to, to say on the camera, what's this idea of yours about why, why break you hear people talk about it. Why break it into chunks? Why do it in 500 point chunks? What is the purpose of, of painting like that? Sure. Well, for me, it was, um, it's quite, as you say, I wanted to do the army of the all points. It's a wide variety of sculpts, so it doesn't work well as, as one big bulk. So breaking it down means that I'm going to be looking at a lot of easy wins. There'll be unit by unit and small, simple wins. So for example, you've got the Ogroid Myrmidon on the screen there. Well, I did all of the Ogroids together, the him and the Theridons. I airbrushed all the skin in one go. But then I went through and painted him specifically as one thing because that was a tick for me. Brilliant. I've got a unit done. Fantastic. That's a win and that's a motivator. Um, And you need those little wins across a large project, regardless of whether it's painting a unit. It might be down to something as simple as as we've done painting in our lunch break and having a chat. It might be I've painted the leather on this guy's on this this unit today. That's amazing. What a what a fantastic win. And something that was um, hit home for me particularly, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners have the same, is that if you've only got maybe an hour a week to do your own painting, you need to you need to be getting a win every single time you sit down to do that painting to keep you motivated. So actually, if you've only got the time to paint an Ogroid Myrmidon shield in a week, fantastic. You've painted the Ogroid Myrmidon shield, you know, and then slowly but surely you're going to build this up and you'll have 500 points in no time. And when you've got to your 500 points, this is a fairly arbitrary number, but it's nice. It's a nice small sort of benchmark. You could take that and play a game, take it up to your local shop or your gaming club, get someone else's opinion on it. Just feel feel happy in your success. And that will boost you no end to going on to complete the next 500 points. It's a, it's a really cool, cool little tactic to cel- celebrate the wins. No, I, I think that does make a lot of sense. I, I know for me, one of the, the things I I miss a little bit is is not necessarily being able to share or, or not wanting to share the project whilst it's in the whip stages. You really just want to show it when it's done. And if that is a very large project, then that's a very long time to not really be interacting with your friends. Um, or if you choose to be more of a social media person, you know, not interacting with your followers and stuff, um, you know, which is, uh, again, a, a, a change in mindset. That's that's absolutely that's been the key for me. It's just a, a huge change in mindset and an approach um, with this army. And I, I don't know when I'll do the next army. If I'm being brutally honest, um, probably when the old world comes out, um, pretty tempted to do that. Or, or maybe as you're saying, an army that starts as a smaller, complete project that may become an army. But if it doesn't, it's a 500 point thing or taking points out the idea. It's a character and some units that you think are cool um but that's the other key for me now i think is this idea of everything has to be a nine out of ten want to do it type thing you know if it's going to be a personal project and that was another thing we you know we 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 would we were trying we were making concessions to try and make a good project for work to produce and produce content on do this so we're making choices like oh we're going to do the bases to match the gerr boards that you know in the recent storyline that would have looked cool but actually both of us really just wanted to paint the bases snow because it's warriors of chaos frozen north that's that's our yeah. that's what we both see right when we think of chaos and i think because the design has not really changed um since the beginning 
you know, you could show someone from 30 years ago a, a modern warrior of chaos model and they, they'd know exactly what it was because it looks like yeah, something out of that artwork. It's been quite hard to get that out of my head. And then it was like, why are you trying to get it out of your head? Just just enjoy it and uh, and do it. So, yeah, a, a mindset's been a big one. So talking about this, you, you're saying this positive mindset, this idea of, of continually achieving something, not looking at it, is at it as I've only got five, you know, leather belts done on this unit. Oh, great. I've got five leather belts done on this unit. Only five more to go. You know, it's, it's a big, big difference, isn't it? Actually, when, when you're doing the same thing. But what physical things were you doing differently now? Were there some differences with recipes or techniques or products? What, what was the sort of changes there for you? Yeah, absolutely. So in order to, to achieve those constant little successes, I think you do need to streamline your processes a little bit. And for me, that came in the form of um, simplified recipes, set recipes, and then sort of a standardized limited color palette across the whole project. So if there was going to be some brown leather, then it was all going to be done in the same same way with the same paints. So the leather on the Ogroid Myrmidon is exactly the same as it is on, you know, on the Warriors of Chaos on the Horns of Hashut. And not only does that really help, as you can see the slide there, it's quite a unified color scheme, despite being quite a wide variety of miniatures. Um, but it means that when I do get 10, even 10 minutes to paint something, I know that right, I, I can block in the leather on these three guys now using Rhinox Hide. And that's it. I know that everything I do, every time I pick up a brush on it, no matter how short the time frame, it's working towards that ultimate end goal of a tick in the win box. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Considering we've we've filmed this thing a few times, I can't believe I left my phone on for this one. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to try and ignore it. Um, let's, let's just, I think it's fair. Is it Archeon? It's not Archeon. Um, it doesn't doesn't use use telephones. Um, so yeah, so just a few quick tips then for this. So approaching it like a larger project, a larger army, color choice wise. So as as you said, recipes become key, right? Take out thinking. Take out any barrier. To work you know right i want to paint a, a warm brown belts on all of them right what last project did i do that one right this flip back through the recipe book gosh those are the three paints i'm going to use um but with regards to sort of the, the style like you say why did you in the end go for the black armor the red because i know i know the answer is because i stole the silver scheme um <laughs> but you know pretend it's not the answer i mean so partly it was a partly in um, necessity made me look elsewhere at colors so the the silver scheme is something i've actually done on a very large um blade of corn army so that I, i've done it so i'm very familiar with it very comfortable but i wanted to do something different and particularly so it was different from yourself so i looked at a few different things like the um the creamy color that we did in the tutorial a while back on the warriors of chaos mm. Um, and a uh, dark red scheme because it looks amazing. But I was, again, I was forcing these things to happen. I was pushing myself further away from what was my sort of original vision for the project. And actually, every time I looked at a piece of reference material, every, every time I tried to do a color test, I was like, I just need to do it that black with like the edged chipped silver. You know, everything was pulling me back to do that. Everything was making me want to do it with the snow bases. So why fight it? Just do it and enjoy it. And it applies to every single project you do. If, if there's something that you really want to do, do that. Don't force yourself to do something that it doesn't feel natural because then it stops being that nine out of 10 project like you're talking about, a bucket list army. Actually, it just becomes a chore because you're fighting yourself and your natural instinct and you're never going to want to paint it. So with that one hour a week, you might get free to hobby. You'll probably sit there and scroll on Instagram instead of painting or you'll find whichever new release Games Workshop has, has smashed out this week and you'll, you'll step away from the project. Yeah, I mean, I feel really called out there, Ben, but thanks. But um you know that, that's that's a very fair that's a very fair point i absolutely though with the whole like just just do the ones you want like i know it sounds daft you know and i'm sure it's not a unique situation you know if you like ultramarines go and pay ultramarines you know if you yeah if you want a classic looking army don't worry about trying to be innovative don't worry about trying to you know break the mold and, and do all this that and the other a lot of my recent videos have been about challenging myself to paint differently and to use different things. And that's great, but they've, it's always been on things where that's okay to do yeah. because that was their only purpose in existing was to practice these things on. 
it was realizing that actually that wasn't this Warriors of Chaos Army's job. This was to yeah. sit on my shelf and make me happy whenever I look over at it. And to get that, I just need a big army of shiny armor, bit of blood, snow bases, really dull, boring, natural tones with just those little little flecks of Warhammer to them. Um, and, and I think that's, yeah, that, that, that's the way we, we, we come with it. Well, um, Unconscious don't want this to turn into like a normal podcast episode that goes on for an hour and a half and, uh, and all the rest of it. But I hope you guys have picked up a few little bits and bobs here that you might be able to use um, with your own projects. If you've got suggestions or recommendations for things that you've done where you have helped you push through sticking points in projects or help you resurrect a project that you thought that was maybe gone um, and actually got it finished. We always go on about this mantra, you know, finished is better than perfect. Um, and, and that has to be key and that sort of for, forefront in your mind. So if there's anything like that, pop them down in the comments. I'd love to read them. I'm sure everyone else would love to read them as well. If you want any commission work doing, you can always hit up Ben commissions at cartpaint.com or go to the website and you can find him uh, via there. Um, I hugely appreciate you coming on and doing this, bud. And I really appreciate the chats that we've had. It's been great having a cup of tea, having a bit of a whinge, and then listening to someone who actually knows what they're talking about, you know, who can say, well, this is how you get this done. And they can then point to the body of work that proves that they can get things done. Um, and it, it's, it's been really, really helpful. So thanks for joining me on that. Thanks for joining us on this. Hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already. And we'll see you next time.